Let's look at the idea of data inference for the SAT math section. So data inference is taking a small group out of a larger population, and that smaller group would be called a sample, and you take some information about that sample, and you're going to make an estimate of the whole population. So for example, let's say that the whole population is everyone in a high school, and you want to try and figure out what's a good estimate for the mean height of everyone in the high school. What's the average height of everybody? Well, let's say you don't have time to ask everyone what their height is. But what you could do is you could ask some people their height, take the average out of that small group, which is your sample, and then you could say, hey, that's going to be an estimate for the whole population. And, you know, if I were to just ask one person, that person could be a tall person or a short person. It might not be a good estimate. So the more people that I ask in my sample, the, the larger my sample size, the better uh, chance that I have of getting a more accurate conclusion or an estimate for that whole group. So that's kind of question one here. It says, to make a conclusion from a survey, generally speaking, the larger the sample size, the more accurate the conclusion that can be made. Yes, that's going to be true. Okay, another key idea is that if I don't take a random sample, then I might have bias in my sample, and it might not be a good estimate either. So here's another example from that high school height average situation. Let's say that there's the boys varsity basketball team is having practice. And I, you know, I want to get a, a group of people. I want to get a, a sample and to, to ask what their height is. And if I just go and say, hey, there's some basketball practice going on. I'll just ask everyone right there in the gym what their height is and use that as an estimate. Well, I'm going to get a much higher estimate than the actual height because oftentimes basketball players are taller than your average student. So I want to get a random sample. That's going to be a key idea here. So let me just write this random sample. If I don't get a random sample, there's a really good chance that I'm not going to get a good estimate. So let's see what question two says. A group surveys 50 people at a mall about their support or opposition to a politician's policies. What's the main reason that this is not a good method to collect data in order to make a conclusion about the opinions on the matter of everyone in the town? Is the sample size too small? Well, 50 people, you know, I could use that to make an estimate. I might get a decent estimate if I have taken my sample properly, which is making a random sample. B, the people surveyed were not picked randomly from the town's population. Yeah, I didn't pick them randomly, right? It was just 50 people at a mall. So let's say that mall was a, a very expensive mall. Then not everyone might be able to shop there. Only people who are very wealthy might be able to shop there. And so I won't get a good representative um, group from my population. Okay, so I'm going to say that, uh, yeah, the people weren't picked randomly here. So that's going to be the main reason that this is not, uh, I might not be able to make an accurate conclusion. All right, choice C, you shouldn't talk about politics in public. It's kind of a uh, kind of a joke answer here. But yeah, it's going to be B. So look for that random sample. That's really important for these types of questions. Number three, in a survey of a random sample of 1,500 residents. Okay, so that's good. They've got a random sample. They tell me here that. Uh, so there's a random sample of 1,500 residents aged 25 years or older from a particular county. 399 residents had a bachelor's degree or higher. If the entire county had 635,000 residents aged 25 years or older, approximately how many county residents could be expected to have a bachelor's degree or higher? So here's what I have. I've We've gotten a, a sample size of 1,500. So out of 1,500, 399 of them have a bachelor's degree or more. That's, that's roughly a fourth. It's going to be a little bit more than a fourth, right? So if we use that as an estimate, in fact, this is this would be on the calculator section. So I'll use my calculator, 399 over 1,500. That's equal to 0.266. So that's about 26%, a little more than 26% of, of these people in the sample have a bachelor's degree or higher. Well, then I could use that as an estimate for my whole population. I'm going to say that, you know, 26.6% or 0.266% times the whole group that would be my estimate for how many people in you know the entire population has a bachelor's degree or higher so 
let's do this multiplication 0.266 times 635,000, I get 168,910. And so the best estimate would be choice D there. All right, and then number four. Number four is going to talk about confidence levels. I'm going to give a quick example, um, uh, just to explain kind of what this is talking about. So let's say that... Uh, that we want to estimate tomorrow's, uh, the high temperature for tomorrow. And let's say that recently it's been about 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. So I'll just say, you know, it's been about 15 degrees Celsius recently. So I want to say, all right, I think that tomorrow's high temperature will be between uh, maybe 14 degrees to 16 degrees Celsius. All right. How confident am I that the actual high temperature for tomorrow will be in this range? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm about 50% confident. So my confidence level would be about 50%. All right? Well, let's say we, we change this, this interval here. We're going to make it wider. I'm going to make it a wider interval. I'm going to say, well, what's the chance that it's going to be between 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius? Ooh, I'd be a lot more confident that the actual high tomorrow would be in this wider range than in this smaller range or this smaller interval. So I'm going to say, hey, maybe I'm, I'm like 90% confident that it's going to be in, in this interval. So the idea is that if your interval for some estimate gets larger, if there's that you know, bigger range that some value might be within, you're more confident that the actual value is going to be in that, in that range. And if it gets smaller, if the interval is smaller, you're less confident. So let's apply that idea here. A researcher collecting information about 1,000 randomly selected physical therapists concluded that the median hourly wage for physical therapists in the United States at the time of the study was between $22.76 and $59.24 with a 95% confidence level. Okay, so this is saying that their estimate for the median was between 22, about $22 and $59. dollars they 95% confident that that's what the actual median is between. Okay, so that's kind of like this, this interval here. Which of the following could represent the median hourly wage based on the same sample for physical therapists in the United States with a 90% confidence level? Oh, so the confidence level decreased. They're less confident that, you know, it would be between this new interval compared to the old one. That's like saying, hey, we went from 10 degrees to 20 degrees down to 14 to 16 degrees. We're, we're decreasing that interval and we're less confident. So in, in this answer, I'm going to say that, hey, my, if, if they're less confident about it, this interval will decrease. It'll be a smaller interval here. So I'm looking for numbers that are greater than $22 on the shorter end, and then they're smaller than $59 on the larger end because that would be a smaller interval. So which answer choice has that? Well, let's see. This, uh, this went, went down, so I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for bigger than 22, right? And, and this went up. I'm not looking for that. That's a larger interval, not that one. The next one, uh, 20. Okay, that also is getting a larger interval. This side's getting smaller, but once if they're both getting smaller, no, that's not what I'm looking for. The smaller one to get bigger, the bigger one to get smaller. All right, let's see. This one, 21. No, that also is getting smaller. It's not going to be that one. Let's see. Choice D. Hopefully it's this. $25. Yeah, that went up from 22. That's good. 56. That went down from 59. Yes. So that's that smaller interval. Still kind of centered at the same, at the same center. So D is going to be the answer for that one.